It's about three weeks since the attack on the Renzururu King's Palace in Kasese district. But accusations and counter accusations are still being traded by the people who are in the eye of the storm. The commander of the UPDF 2nd Division, Brigadier Peter Erweru, has accused legislators from Kasese district of supporting and financing the militant group that's alleged to have killed police officers in the region. So for somebody to say that we kill the civilians, that person is not serious. Actually, those ones who are saying so are the ones who must go to the ICC because they are responsible for whatever was happening in, in, in Renzori. They know it, they planned it, they financed it. But the Kasese municipality MP refuted the allegation in a phone interview with NTV. It can never be true. So you... That is not true at all. How do you finance conflict in an area which you represent? That's an unfounded allegation, actually, and he's going to pay for it. On the 8th of this month, the legislators from Kasese met the ICC registrar, Haman von Habel, to petition the court to investigate the killing of more than 100 people in the attack, which they described as a crime against humanity. But Brigadier Erweru dismissed the MP's move and instead urged them to take responsibility and resign. These MPs should have stopped this. The fact that they failed to stop it, they must get out of parliament. They should just resign. So actually the people who should take responsibilities are the politicians from Kasese, especially those opposition politicians led by the leader of opposition. So, it's not in any way mandated to even ask for our resignation. Actually, we would require that he resigns his job because he's a big shame to the UPDF. The seasoned army officer also dismissed allegations about children being in the palace at the time of the attack. There was no child in that camp. There was no child there. Mumbere got to know that we are, we are going to attack him on Friday. Mumbere sent his wife on Saturday the 26th in the morning. That's when he sent his wife with his children and they all left. With including all his property. In Mumbere's house there was nothing. He was only remaining with one trouser and one shirt. We had an interface with those suspects who were arraigned in court in Jinja. And they were narrating the ordeal of how their children were being thrown in the fire. You can imagine how traumatized they are. The tough-talking brigadier said the 52 unclaimed bodies in the attack were of Congolese. He added that the entire plan to carry out subversive activities was hatched in the DRC Congo. We know that there were some groups which are in DRC. And we know that they, was, they, they were supposed to enter this country between the 1st of October and the 9th. So all these 52 bodies you see there, who were not claimed, these are Congolese. Let him bring his report. And the defense committee was there. It interfaced with him. We are waiting for those allegations to come out in the report. And we shall give him a proper response. And one of the recommendations we actually give is that he should be court-martialed because he's a very reckless and irresponsible commander. He doesn't even deserve to be a division commander, by the way. Brigadier Erweru says the army gathered lots of evidence about the activities of the Renzururu kingdom. So they already had the territory. They had the, their flags placed everywhere. They had an army. They had an anthem. They had a currency. They had a map for their country. The hearing of the case of King Charles Wesley Mumbere will resume on the 28th of December 2016 at the Ginger Magistrates Court.